Hello everybody, welcome to Sermon on the Go. Uh, today's theme is strategy for vital church growth. Strategy for vital church growth. And it is a training session for all my parishioners, especially for those who are leaders of our new Bible study home cell groups. The evidence of life is growth because every living thing grows. The proof that something is alive is growth. When a child is born, the baby cries. When the baby doesn't cry, in Africa, parts of Africa where I come from, the baby will be pinched, then the child will cry. When a Christian no longer craves for fellowship, it means you are dead. When there is no cry on the inside of you for the word of God, for the study of the Bible, it means you are no longer alive. When coming to church, and going to house fellowship or Bible study group looks like a burden to you, then there is something seriously missing in your walk with Christ. The Bible says in Psalm 84, they go from strength to strength, each one who appears before God in Zion. You change levels when you appear in God's presence. For in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So you come out of pressure when you study the Bible in fellowship and in the presence of God. For God pleasures removes pressures from your lives. Appearing in God's presence simply means to have fellowship with God. God believes in fellowship. He said in Genesis, let us make man in our image. He didn't say, let me make man. He said, let us make man in our image. So God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God and the Holy Spirit were all present at the beginning of creation. God has always believed in fellowship. Fellowship is an association of people who share common beliefs and values. It means companionship. Christian fellowship means a company of people of God with the same belief in Christ, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. God has ordained many different kinds of fellowship. There is church fellowship, there is family fellowship, and there is home fellowship. Every fellowship is important. And for today, I'm going to be focusing on one particular fellowship, home cell Bible study groups. Continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. There is temple fellowship, which in our contemporary world is Christian fellowship or church fellowship. And there is house to house fellowship. And the early church were doing the two simultaneously. When they finish worshiping in the temple in the morning, in the evening, they go to their house fellowship. And they were going back to back between worshiping God in the temple 
and going to their home fellowship, studying the Bible together. There are over 12 to 15 Bible verses that confirms churches meeting in houses. But for the purpose of this training, I will mention one or two of them. 1. Romans chapter 16 verses 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. 2. Philemon chapter 1 verses 2. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to our beloved Apea, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Third, Acts chapter 12. Verses 12. So when Peter has considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many people were gathered praying together. That was Peter, the chief apostle. It was the church in the house that prayed for Peter to be released from prison. In all these three verses, you can see that the early Christians met in people's homes outside of the temple worship. Now, the Bible study I am about to start in my parish, I have decided that we call it a Bible study group. But it is also called a home cell group. But why do we call it a cell group? That's because the human body is composed of trillions of cells. And the Bible calls you and I the body of Christ. And different cells makes up the human body. If the cells dies, the body will die. Therefore, any church without a healthy cell fellowship, without a healthy Bible study group or home cell group, that church begins to die. It is imperative to remember that it is not the body that builds the cells, but rather it is the cells that builds up the body. Therefore, the congregation must see this new Bible study cell fellowship as key to revival for our church and key to evangelism because it is the cell groups that enables the church to grow and flourish. Any church that wants to have a sustainable growth should make home cell fellowship their priority assurance of longevity is received by the church when we continually fellowship with one another and study the bible together and particularly for those who have accepted to lead our bible study home cell groups Please listen to what I'm about to say carefully. David will not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took the ark of God aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Now it was told to King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him, because the ark of God is dwelling in his house. So David went and brought up the ark of God.
from the house of Obed-Edom and place it in the city of David with gladness. And David said, Because the ark is in this man's house, God has blessed him. When you allow your house to be used for Bible study groups and home cell fellowship, it means you are putting the ark of God into your house. And the moment the ark of God dwells in your house, the Lord will bless you beyond measure and all your household. Everything about you will be blessed. And of course, for those who will come to your house and study the Bible with you and have fellowship with you, all will be blessed. David said, Because the ark of the Lord is in this man's house, God has blessed him. So he went and took the ark of God and brought it back to the city of David with gladness so that God will bless him. And so to all my congregation members, I want to thank you for bearing with me and for taking part in this new Bible study, Home Cell Fellowship. And I particularly thank those of you who have accepted to be the leaders of these groups. Because of your leadership, it is my prayer that God will supply a supernatural blessing upon your lives and that you are going to testify of the goodness of God in your home and in your household because you have allowed the Bible study group to meet in your house thereby taking the ark of God to dwell in your home. It is a powerful thing for the ark of God to dwell in your house. So God bless you as you lead these people, these new Christians, as you lead our members of the church, our congregation members in the study of God's word. Of course, from time to time, I will come around and visit you as you study the Bible, but I will be a guest, but I will be with you as you study the Bible together and encourage you and support you in your new Bible study. Let us all come together, study the Bible together, worship God together, and pray together as we journey with our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. We thank you for the biblical test. We thank you for your Holy Scriptures. And we thank you for helping us to start these new Bible study groups and home fellowship. I pray for every member of my church and all in my parish that they will willingly take part of this new discovery of the study of your Word and that your blessing may be upon us all as we learn new things and explore the Bible for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My dear friends, I shall see you soon. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>